the merger is structured as a gift agreement. It wasn't two equal entities merging. One organization actually gave itself, its collection, its asset, its staff, everything as a straightforward gift to the Academy. The Honolulu Academy of Arts is, is an extraordinary building, a historic building with what, six major courtyards, 45,000 works, encyclopedic, and it's an urban setting. It's, you know, we're on Thomas Square, there's buses and a six-lane road in front. I think we would describe it as a mid-sized museum. However, it's fairly large, and uh, the, the, the building itself was designed by Bertram Goodhue in the early 20s and it's designed around a courtyard system where you can go in and out of the galleries. Um, and that creates this wonderfully intimate uh, experience for viewers that is connected directly to the experience of Hawaii and nature. The Contemporary Museum is very different. It's actually an extraordinary property on a hillside overlooking the the valley, not very big, not huge gallery spaces, but the place there, the Cook Spalding House place, is just beautiful gardens. Collection of about 3,000 works, contemporary, well, since 1945 or so. The gallery is about 5,000 square feet, and it's separated kind of like a home, so we consider each gallery space like a size of a bedroom, and we can actually curate an entire exhibition throughout the entire museum, or we can break them up into have five, six, seven um, smaller exhibitions within a larger context. Well, I think, it, you know, for any museum, um, but I think specifically for this site and this place, the environment really adds to a visitor's experience. Um, contemporary art, sometimes people think it's a little hard to grasp or understand, but when you're walking in the gardens, you're contemplating the foliage, seeing the rain come from the sky, having the wind sweep through the monkey pod tree, it really adds an element to your day and to your visitor's experience. So I think it's really something special to be able to view contemporary art um, inside, outside. When I first heard about what the two museums were considering, which is basically to bring the Contemporary Museum and the Academy together as one entity. I thought it was a no-brainer. I just thought it was so obvious. It was interesting then to enter these conversations in January and see what people were negotiating and how they were thinking about it. What struck me was both institutions saw themselves to some degree as either oppositional or complementary to each other. So, the Contemporary Museum would compare itself to the Academy, the Academy would compare itself to the Contemporary, but the reality is the interesting conversation is a global conversation. I want the Academy to be comparing itself to Tokyo or Berlin, right? And I think that bringing them together, my hope, opens up a broader conversation between us and the world and making sure when people come here, they're interested and engaged in a great conversation. We call it Gallery 27, that's an internal name. Gallery 27 is simply the 27th gallery, they're numbered sequentially. We're choosing now to show contemporary art. Initially, when the curator presented the plan for Gallery 27, he was very smart. It was presenting a much more conservative exhibition. I had initially done a proposal for uh, an exhibition on, from the collections on abstraction and involving you know, sort of all of the really major works from both collections. It was abstract expressionist paintings, color field school paintings, a little bit after that, because he was trying to figure out how not to upset the apple cart, right? Not to push our audience at the academy too quickly too far. And I talked to him and I said, well, strategically, I don't want that. I want you to flip the apple cart over. And so he left it open to me to come up with something. And I sort of arbitrarily chose as a working title, Anxiety's Edge, because in thinking about a lot of the works in the collection, I knew I could put together an interesting group. So Gallery 27 is now going to be the contemporary holdings or collection and gallery space. And Jay Jensen, um, the Contemporary Museum,
Museum's Chief Curator and Deputy Director of Exhibitions, um, put together an exhibition called Anxiety's Edge. So using contemporary works um, in all media, sculpture, um, works on paper, photography, to create a, a new installation that was, was really thought-provoking, really to add a different look to it. I want things that are going to stress people who hate contemporary art out. Because I think with a gift agreement of the Contemporary Museum to come here, if we then turn around and show beautiful modernist works that are 50 years old or 40 years old, they're going to see and think that the gift was a failure. So he's put together an exhibition called Anxiety's Edge, and it's all about basically stress in contemporary art. Let's just literalize the anxiety everybody's having. I think for people who are familiar with the Academy and familiar with this gallery, they're going to immediately be impacted by the change of the layout of the room of the gallery and the architecture. Um, you used to be able to come into the gallery and stand in the middle of it and do a 360 degree turn and pretty much see everything in the gallery. Um, we've changed that so it's more broken up, there are smaller, more intimate spaces, um, the sight lines are focused on focal points, there are turns, and uh, it really sort of hopefully provides the visitor with a sense of discovery you know, as they're going through the, the exhibition or the installation that they'll keep seeing and discovering new works around every turn. Um, the two collections are very complementary. I think as soon as the Academy's collection ends, the Contemporary Museum's collection um, adds and picks up. So it, the holdings are substantial now um, in terms of contemporary as well as chronological. And there are gaps. And I think you know, being part of a larger institution with a larger donor base, there's ways to be able to fill in some of those gaps that we're missing in, throughout the history. Art museums must remain relevant um, in order for the experience of our viewers to be meaningful. And uh, for museums, I think it's important to have a strong contemporary art program, but also to look at their collections and to look back throughout history using their collections and thinking about the present day. So looking backwards to look forwards, I think, is what museums need to do today to be relevant. My concern isn't actually the days that we're at our best. We do those really well. My energy and my concern is the days where we're not doing those things. It's your average Tuesday that I'm worried about. How do we make sure that people come all the time? I'm excited about the possibility of educating our public about contemporary art. And I'm excited about people, I hope, encountering edgy work and maybe finding an affinity or at least a validity of that, for that work. I think that if contemporary art is part of our life and culture, then, then, then we've been successful.